Welcome to episode 194 of the Pharmacist Voice podcast. I'm the host, Kim Newlove. This is one of my drug name pronunciation episodes. Today, we're talking about tyoneptine. How do these pronunciation episodes work? First, I break down drug names into syllables. Next, I explain which syllable or syllables has the emphasis. Then, I reveal the source of the information. And finally, I put the written pronunciation in the show notes so you can see it and use it right away. If you're new to my pronunciation episodes, welcome! The purpose of these pronunciation episodes is to provide the intended pronunciations of drug names from reliable sources so that you feel more confident saying them and less frustrated learning them. I hope this episode helps. Let's dive in. Why focus on tyoneptine today? There are two reasons. One is to talk about the pronunciation, of course, and two is to improve awareness about it. Let's start with the pronunciation, then I'll talk about what it is. Tyoneptine has four syllables. Tie, like you tie your shoes. Uh, like that lovely schwa a sound. Uh. Nep, like the planet Neptune. And teen, like a teenager. Tyoneptine. Tyoneptine. The third syllable, nep, gets the emphasis. See if you can hear it when I say it slowly. Tyoneptine. Tyoneptine. How did I know how to pronounce tyoneptine? Honestly, for this one, it was an educated guess. Tyoneptine is not an FDA approved drug, and it appears in the USP Dictionary online only as an international non proprietary name without a written pronunciation. What does all that mean? It means that there is no written pronunciation for tyoneptine yet. No official pronunciation. Now, I have never put a drug without a formal written pronunciation on my show. There's a first time for everything, and that is this. Now, you may have to take a stab at an unapproved drug name without an official pronunciation someday, too. So, this episode and my rationale about how to say tyoneptine might help you down the road if you find yourself in a similar situation. What is tyoneptine? Tyoneptine is an atypical tricyclic antidepressant that is not approved in the United States by the FDA. It is marketed as coaxal and stablon. Coaxal and stablon. Where is it marketed? in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Now, although it's not approved for use in the United States, tyoneptine has still been found in products that are sold in the United States. Where are these products sold? They're sold in gas stations, convenience stores, and online. The products go by the names Zaza, Tyana Red, and others. If this drug is not approved by the FDA, why am I talking about tyoneptine on this podcast? It's because it was mentioned in a news release that I received via email from the Ohio Board of Pharmacy in December 2022. That was just last month, just a few days ago, actually, as I record this in January 2023. By the way, if you haven't figured this out yet, if you don't know me, I am an Ohio pharmacist, and that is why I'm getting an email from the Ohio Board of Pharmacy. Now, what was in this news release? Ohio Governor Mike DeWine allowed the Ohio Board of Pharmacy to classify all products containing tyoneptine as Schedule I controlled substances pursuant to Ohio Administrative Code 4729 9-1-01.03. According to the news release, tyoneptine has been linked to serious harm, overdoses, and death. When I think about Schedule I controlled substances, I think about LSD, heroin, and ecstasy. Tyoneptine is now part of that group of Schedule I controlled substances in Ohio. As a reminder, Schedule I drugs have no currently accepted medical use and they have a high potential for abuse. According to the news release, products containing tyoneptine should be removed from store shelves and disposed of immediately. What's the bottom line here? The sale and use of tyoneptine is banned in Ohio. 
What's so dangerous about this atypical tricyclic antidepressant? According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, otherwise known as the CDC, case reports demonstrate that tyoneptine toxicity mimicked opioid toxicity, and naloxone was an effective therapy. I think you know where I'm going with this. Furthermore, tolerance to tyoneptine and withdrawal have been reported. Tyoneptine is nicknamed gas station heroin. In summary, structurally, This looks like an atypical tricyclic antidepressant, but it acts like an opioid. For the pharmacists and pharmacy students who are in clinical practice and listen to my podcast, I have three pieces of advice for you about tyoneptine. First of all, use common sense. If someone takes tyoneptine and needs immediate help, call 911. Second, If someone comes to you with concerns about tyoneptine and you just don't know enough about it to be helpful, refer them to the Poison Helpline. The Poison Helpline is 1-800-222-1222. Third and finally, if one of your patients is harmed by a tyoneptine product, fill out an FDA MedWatch form. Links to the MedWatch form and the Poison Helpline are in the show notes. Now that you know the basics about tyoneptine, I'll share my rationale for saying it the way that I do. I already mentioned that there is no official, dictionary-based pronunciation. There are no stems, either, if you happen to know what those are. So what I did first was listen to some YouTube videos. Some people say tyoneptine. Others say tyoneptine. That was unhelpful. Getting more than one pronunciation is unhelpful because then I have to guess. What was helpful? Precedent set by other non proprietary or generic drug names and drug classes. Which ones, you may ask? There are four. First up is quetiapine. The TIA is the same as it is in tyoneptine. Quetiapine, tyoneptine. Second is diltiazem. Again, that TIA is just like the TIA in tyoneptine. Diltiazem, tyoneptine. Third is the drug class thiazides. Thiazide diuretics, like hydrochlorothiazide. Thiazide, tyoneptine. Hydrochlorothiazide, tyoneptine. Fourth and finally is the benzodiazepine drug class and the drug name diazepam. Benzodiazepine, Tyoneptine. Diazepam. Tyoneptine. Note that none of my examples have an ia sound like tianeptine. Otherwise, we would have quetiapine or theazide diuretics or hydrochlorothiazide or benzodiazepines or diltiazem or diazepam. <laughs> Hopefully, I did that right. Bad examples are not my forte. Tyoneptine makes sense to me, so I recommend that you say tyoneptine too. In your lifetime, you may need to say a drug name that you don't know how to pronounce. If it's a generic drug name, lean into what you already know like I did. Look for patterns and do your best. Let's wrap this up. Thanks for joining me today to learn about tyoneptine. To find the show notes for this episode, go to thepharmacistvoice.com click on the podcast tab and search for episode 194. In the show notes today, you'll find my written pronunciation for tyoneptine, the poison helpline number, which again is 1-800-222-1222. You'll also find a link for the FDA MedWatch form, the Ohio Board of Pharmacy news release about tyoneptine, my social media links, and more. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next week.